while you guys have been here, for anybody go to the driving sales summit at all? Okay. What was the big thing there? The big thing there was big data, right? You're going to hear that term thrown around. You're going to hear me hit on it a couple times today. I'm not your traditional presenter. I don't try to bore you with a lot of slides, although they tell me I have to use them. I like things to be interactive. So if you have a question or a comment, I'm always wanting to engage the crowd. So what do you say we get started here? A little bit about my company. I'm the executive vice president in charge of business development. So I'm the guy who oversees all the manufacturer operations for the company. I'm the liaison to Toyota, Nissan, Infinity, a lot of the other brands. I also handle all of our channel partnerships and strategic partnerships. We're located in Rockville, Maryland. We're very proud to be 2011-2012 Inc. 5000. We are a Google certified agency. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. According to NADA, parts and accessories is close to a $300 billion a year industry. It is the lion's share of your business today as a retail car dealer. However, it is, and I make this statement, the single most overlooked, underutilized area today. Americans are actually keeping their cars longer. 1995, eight years, pan out to 2011, consumers are up to 11 years of ownership on a vehicle. Economy's down, quality of vehicles are getting better, right? So they're lasting longer. What does that say to you about your dealership abandonment and fixed ops? The vein has never been more exposed, right? We typically lose customers when? When we lose customers? After warranty's out. Smoke comes off their heels. Why? Why do we lose that customer? No retention. They actually believe it's more expensive to service their vehicle with you, and it probably hasn't been all that great of an experience. Right? Google fixed op searches are up more than 400% in the last five years, gang. 4x multiple, they are up. Back in 2007, 121,000 searches per day for things like oil change, brake, tires, batteries. Fast forward to 2012, 620,000 a day. As we get into the latter part of this presentation, I'm gonna talk a little bit deeper about mobile and the use of mobile. How many of you have mobile sites? Okay. Anybody here have a fixed ops mobile site? I like that. Very good. You know, and all the times I ask that question, I've never had anyone raise their hand. That's huge. I like it. All right. Here we go. That's 36,000 miles. I'm out of here. <laughs> My warranty just ran out. Good thing I have you boys. When the warranty runs out, just come in. Pep Boys does everything a car dealer does for less. Brakes, oil changes, and maintenance. Pep Boys ASC certified technicians will diagnose and repair your vehicle at the lowest price. Guaranteed. Pep Boys does everything for less. Now, there are ladies in the room, so I won't tell you what this commercial does to me. But... Let's characterize it that it sort of POs me, right? A national brand going out and actually saying, warranty's out, don't go to a car dealership. <clears throat> Basically, they're telling the American public that you'll just get screwed. We do everything a car dealer does, but we do it for what? That's, That's mentally ingrained in the minds of the consumers that buy cars from car dealers, right? This isn't the only company that does this. Anyone seen the Jiffy Loop commercial where the guys are racing after the cars trying to find something to fix? These national brands are attacking our ethics. They're attacking our business. They are taking <coughs> money out of your pocket and food off your table. And if you think I'm kidding, you need to wake up. They're cleaning your clock every day. And if you doubt it, go to Google and type things like brake job, oil change, tire rotation. I'll buy anyone in this room dinner if you show up inside of page three. Think about it. You're like, oh, Jeff, I wouldn't search that way. No? Guess what? I don't care what you would search. Because you, as a car dealer, have been trained to do what? Find yourself. 
You are all preconditioned today to go to the web and be able to find you. Are you not? How many of you go to your website every day and check and see how your search engine rankings are doing? What you're indexing for, what you're not indexing for. Do you ever do it for service? Anybody? No, you don't. And it makes no sense. Here's why they're cleaning our clock, right? And I use this illustration, it seemed appropriate being in Vegas to use this. <coughs> Firestone, Jiffy Lube, Pep Boys, NTB, Sears Auto Service Center, and here we are, right? This little shack sitting out here saying, well, we can take care of you. Do your dealership service cars and vehicles other than what you sell? Mm -hmm. How come you don't tell anybody? I think the general public knows that. We assume that they know that. Well, I got used cars. I traded in. You're making me stretch to figure out that I can service my vehicle with you. Show of hands, how many people here think that the technician at Costco putting tires on your vehicle is an ASE factory trained certified class A mechanic? Because if you do, you might stay out a little bit too late last night. But yet, yeah, you're gonna put your children your loved ones in that vehicle and you're going to sling yourself 70 miles an hour down the highway for the perception that you're saving 20 bucks. Does it make sense? Do you tell anybody that, by the way, you want factory training technicians working on your vehicle regardless? What's Jiffy Loop tell the American public? Well, we're not mechanics, but we keep your cars running longer. Now, I got to tell you, I got a real problem with someone turning a wrench on my car. It's actually not a mechanic. Dealer profit website content. What's wrong with this picture? NADA says 53% of your profit comes out of the back end of your store. However, the website industry has neglected this. And I'll bet you if you each go to your own website and you're honest and you count the pages of content you have for service, <clears throat> It'll be less than 3% of your total website. So let's role play here for a second. I work for a web company, I come in. What's the first thing I tell you when you talk to me? I'm gonna help you sell more cars. I'm gonna help you, Mr. Dealer, sell more cars because I got the greatest SEO in the world. I'm the smartest guy, I'm the coolest guy, and I just do it better than everybody else. But I never mentioned to you, what are you doing about fixed ops? Fixed ops, ladies and gentlemen, is the only place in your dealership that a customer will actually pay you to buy a car from you. How many of you actively try to sell cars out of the service department? Very good. The only place that people actually pay you to buy a car. Think about that. Take me through and up. I come in, it's a Saturday. I got my car sitting out there. I'm looking at something. You take me on a demo test drive. What happens next? Gotta put a number on my car, right? What better place to put a number on a car than when you got it up on a rack? One of the greatest practices I've ever seen done in a dealership, and it's nothing new, is actually put a little sheet of paper right on the front saying, we need your vehicle, your positive equity. We'd love to talk to you, if you're interested, about possibly looking and getting into a new car. I've seen it done by positive equity, I've seen it, you can get into a new car for the same or less, I've seen it done several different ways. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no greater place to put an eyeball on a car to sell somebody a service or potentially sell them a new vehicle than right in your own service department. But see, we have a problem in this industry, and what is it? Sales and service don't like each other. Am I wrong? Service manager, go hang out with sales manager, have a beer. Not unless they're brother-in-laws, right? We got to get over that. We all work for the same owner, but we as an industry pit ourselves against each other. What's parts do to service? Screws them. First chance I get. Well, I got to make money. Mark it up. What sales got to do? Well, they got to mark it up. By the time it gets to the poor customer, we've marked the damn thing up three times. 
Be smarter. Think longer and harder about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Click through rates by SERP position. Anyone not know what a SERP position is? Search engine ranking position. It's where you're placed. The top three positions on a SERP page command 60% of the clicks. Less than 2% of consumers. Can yeah. Google just change that to location based though? They have. Okay. One of the things that you will find, folks, if you are now on page one of Google, less than 2% of consumers ever come off the first page. And why do they do that? Because they didn't find what they wanted on the first page. They were looking for something specific. Dealers are absent on Google when it comes to fixed operations, right? Some of the best dealers in the country are only on page three for things like Break Job Minneapolis. Google's got that wonderful little function in there that you can change your location, right? So Google wants to deliver localized content, right? Your Google Places account, that local content, now gives you a real opportunity, a genuine opportunity to change the landscape. I did a search for brakes, Minneapolis, guess what? Not a single dealer on page one. You go out and you do a search for oil change. Guess what? No dealers. Battery replacement. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Zero dealers. I feel like Jeff, come on. You really need to rub salt in an open wound? You bet I do. Because <laughs> if I don't get your attention, if I don't rattle you, you're going to do the same thing you've been doing up to this point, which is what? Nothing. Nothing. When do people actually do services? Think about this. Go through the mental psyche of why people. Do, do you wake up one morning and say, Man, I want to go burn 700 bucks. I'm fixing up my car. Doesn't happen, does it? When you hear a rap, when you smell something burning, it's a pain point. When do you go to a collision center? <clears throat> when you wreck your damn car, right? People seek these things out when they're in pain. When they're in pain, what do they want to do? They want to fix it quickly. If no other slide in here rocks your world, this one better. Less than 5% of the content that exists within Google, and Google's like this juggernaut, right? Everybody knows it. Less than 5% of the content that exists on Google when it comes to fix-offs belongs to you, 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 and you. How in the world, people, are you ever going to compete unless you put content out there? How many of you here, and a lot of the sessions you go to, content, 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 right? Go to your website and look at it. Oh, Jeff, I don't know where to get it. It's out there, it's easy enough to find. Your web provider should be happy to help you do it. Now this, this is actually very exciting, all right? How many people got smartphones? iPads, iPhones, droids, right? 70% of shoppers flip on the same day. <clears throat> so when it hurts, I want it to go away, right? If you don't have content, if you don't have a mobile strategy, guess what? I'll bet you 69.8% of them are finding the independent repair shops and the national franchise brands and not your dealership, unless the vehicle's under warranty. Now, I'm not big on quotes because I think they're overused, but this one's, a, I think, sort of funny if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. We all had blockbuster cards, right? There isn't a single person in this room young enough, I'm sorry, ladies, that doesn't remember going to Blockbuster and paying eight bucks for a freaking beta tape or VHS tape. Ended up getting stuck buying popcorn and candy. By the time you get home, it's a $50 trip to the store. How much does it cost to rent a movie from Redbox today? 
How long can you keep it? You can actually keep it as long as you want. Right? For a dollar. What did I just do? It disrupted the entire market. I turned it on its ear. This guy was making millions, laughing all the way to get on his yacht. These boys ain't even on a radar. Hot damn, we got everything locked down. He's out of the job. Investors aren't happy. Blockbuster is non-existent. You will go the way of the dodo bird if you don't change. Most people go on diets when a doctor tells them, your fat behind needs to lose a few pounds or you're going to die. Most people end up in a service department because they got a problem. It's pain, people. We are actually seeking people out that are in pain. Something hurts. Help them. Which of these locations, and I'm always interested to see the responses. Show of hands. How many people would rather eat at the restaurant on the left? Come on, put them up. How many people would rather eat at the restaurant on the right? What if I told you a restaurant on the right is a crab shack with buckets of cold beers and beautiful people running around? Right? People want to go nice places. People want to be in nice showrooms, right? We spend all this money building these beautiful brick and mortar buildings. I've been in some that'll blow your mind. <laughs> the customer would much rather be there too. Because you know what we got in our service department? We got Starbucks coffee. We got free Wi-Fi. You know what else you have? You have a captive audience of someone that has nothing better to do for the next hour to two until you fix their car then see your point of sale material, talk to your people, go outside, smoke a cigarette, and look at your inventory, <clears throat> right? We build these places, yet we do very little to continue to entice people to come into them. Now, the Criswell folks are very nice people, and I don't use this to poke fun at them, but what I'm about to show you sort of alerts the pain point of what happens. Now, here's their website. Looks pretty nice, right? Here's your service website, or their service content, right? So I assume that that means they have a quick loop lane. I'm guessing by seeing a rack of tires and wheels that you might sell wheels and tires. And I think that's showing me that you sell accessories. You can click here if you got a question. The one thing they did do well here is they peppered me with their 800 number, right? You can email me and here's my hours of operation. Does that look really sexy to you? Is that very enticing? Is that that big fancy restaurant on the left? Or is that that crab shack hole in the wall? However, you come here, bam! It looks nice. It's engaging. It's got photos. It's got coupons. It's got a search function. You can find whatever you want. Show of hands. Who would rather shop this website or that one? Does it hurt yet? Hang with me because I'm really going to make it hurt in a minute. You gotta have content, guys. You have to have it. It's not an option. And you know what? Here's the beautiful thing. Most of it, like MasterCard says, zero dollars. But you actually have to take the time to get it in your website. Jeff, I can barely manage specials on my website. What are you talking about? Right? So, Jeff, how do I fix all this stuff? How do I get back? How many of you have sat in SEO sessions since you've been here? How many people are aware of Panda and Penguin and you're digging in and you're learning about bots and meta tags, right? Your head hurts. I'll make it real easy for you. Basic common principle of content. Throw out all the other words you've heard. Get it out of your head. It's about content. You have to have it. Talking about a great job is not a sexy thing. 
But you know what? Most people don't understand what happens. Any BMW dealers in the room? You ever see the reaction of a customer when you walk out and they're out of their 50,000 mile warranty and you tell them how much said <laughs> Brakes and rotors on BMW cost? <laughs> you hear it, pucker. $3,000, hallelujah. It's not fun, no. right? But we can actually minimize that pain a little bit by giving them content and helping them understand. Here's the dealership front end website. You do not have to change your front end website provider to accomplish this. If you're happy with who you're working with, stay with them. However, challenge them to help you build a separate website. And you're like, oh crap, Jeff. I gotta go to the owner and talk about more money? Yeah, you do. Here comes the pain, right? But man, now look at this. Now, not because it's a Porsche dealership and I happen to be a big fan of 911s, right? But this is sexy. It's got content. It's got engagement points. It's got a scheduler. I love my wife. I'm one of the very luckiest guys in the world. I married about five classes up, right? Well, when my wife gets that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon in the mail, something happens to her. And then subsequently something happens to me. And my wife walks in the door and she's got, by the way, I have four hand towels, potpourri, candles and crap in my house for every holiday and even holidays we don't celebrate that I know what to do with. And she comes in the door, she goes, honey, look at all the great stuff I got. I saved you $70. I said, no, you didn't. You cost me 120 bucks for crap I don't need. But man, is she happy, <laughs> right? The number one search term with anything service related is the word coupon. Very good. What do you think the number one term to be on coupon? We move to the number two slot. What might that be? Free. Discount. Discount and free. There you go. <laughs> Google tells us this, people. If I go to any of your websites right now, am I going to find service coupons on your website? Nope. Yeah. I'd like to. If you don't have them, get them, right? Because we all want what? Free crap. Free car wash. Free something. A discount off. How about marketing to the ladies and saying, ladies, service your vehicle with us on Thursday. Save an extra 15%. You know the thing I like about women shoppers? Women shoppers actually execute. They've got their little planners. They're organized because they're mothers. They run the household. And oftentimes service these days is handled by the wife. But yet we do nothing to market to them. Integrate a scheduler. How many of you have X-Time, Time Highway, one of those products? Didn't it make your life a hell of a lot easier, right? Increase phone ups. Obviously, you know this. Use 800 numbers. And by the way, if there's anyone in this room that has a receptionist answering a phone at their dealership and then routing calls, you need to think long and hard about busting up that strategy, right? Get them where they want to go. How many people here know what deep linking is, right? Do you actually deep link on your websites? Okay. The same principle applies in service. Please do not take me to the home page to make me navigate to where I want to go. For every click you require a consumer to take to get somewhere, because we as car dealers have to know everything, you lose roughly 11%. What do you think? Well, you go to the home page, you click on service, you click on this, you click on that. I've lost 40% of my audience. 
multiple videos to explain maintenance topics. Show of hands in here, how many of you have had a contractor out of your home in the last year to get a quote for some sort of work to be done? A kitchen, a bathroom, whatever. And when you get that quote back, what's the typical reaction you have when you see the quote? <laughs> Why so much? Good contractors will break it down and they'll explain it to you. Anybody here ever actually rehab their own bathroom? I can tell you, as a proud DIY guy, I will never again do that. <laughs> I, I lit money on fire. Upset my wife, and finally had to call someone out to finish it. Because I was convinced I could do it myself, right? Ladies and gentlemen, the same principle applies in the service department. You know, oftentimes the part's the cheapest thing, right? It's the labor. What do I have to tear off to get to that thing to fix it? I bought a new car last year, because I like having an affair with cars, I can't help myself. <laughs> I lifted to the hood, and I looked under there. I have no idea how they get to a blessed thing. <clears throat> right? I couldn't check my oil if I had to. It increases search engine footprint and builds consumer trust. There are some wonderful companies on the market, Unity Works Media, AutoNet TV, right, that have service specific videos that actually show what goes into replacing a water pump or a fan belt or a starter. Help customers begin to understand why these things are so expensive, right? Another product I really like, anybody ever hear of a product called Clear Mechanic? Yeah. Check them out, pretty cool. You can take your iPhone, never leave home without it. You can take a photo of a defective part, you can key in an RO number and instantaneously <coughs> email it to the customer along with an illustration showing them what you're gonna do for approval. Takes less than 10 seconds. Imagine, would you rather send it to them and let them get over the pain and then call them? Or would you rather be the guy that's got to call them and tell them? Right? Videos for any routine service, right? How many of you sell tires in your dealerships? How many of you have tire content on your website? How many of you have tire configurators on your website? I have, a whole, I have an entire tire webpage separate from my service department. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the number one point of defection? Tires. tires. You know what? There's a lot of money in tires. A lot of profit to be made. Yet we as an industry do a very poor job. True story. A couple months ago, I don't even know where I was. Oh, I was San Francisco. And I'm talking to the GM at this store, and he's walking me around. Beautiful facility, gorgeous, right? And he's taking me through his service department. He's very proud of it. And he's got all this point of sale for tires. He actually had a Michelin man. Wow. The blow up, it was very cool. Had Pirelli signs, had all kinds of stuff. So my gears started turning. <coughs> I got out my iPhone, I went to his website, I went to the service department, not a blessed thing on his website about tires. I said, Carlos! I like all your point of sale signs and tires. Yeah, we sell a lot of tires. Couldn't wait to tell me how many tires he sold. I said, a little piece of free advice for you. All these guys, they bring you your tires, the distributor. Why don't you ask him about a tire configurator and stick it on your website? He looked at me like I just gave him the numbers to the winning lottery. We're so in this box of selling cars that we tend to not think about the obvious. Anybody like dirty jobs? 
I love that show, right? Mike Rowe became filthy rich from climbing around in muck and pig crap, right? Ford did a very smart thing. So there are two manufacturers, folks, that are really ahead of the curve on fixed stops. Ford and Toyota. They are progressive. They are out there giving their dealers resources. They are training them. They are teaching them. They are even looking at co-op programs. Because if you service a car, there's a good chance you might actually do what? Buy a car. Cha-ching. We talked about coupons earlier. I can't tell you how important these things are. Any bloggers in the room? Any people follow blogs? Anybody got blogs on their websites? Yeah? All right. I personally am not a blogger. However, Google loves blogs. Why? Human generated content. Think about the difficulty Google has in figuring out who you are, right? Go to Google sometime for a fun little exercise for you and just type in Toyota and see how many search results come back, right? Google's got to sort through piles and piles and piles of content. So how do you as a dealer differentiate yourself, right? You've got to have the content. Using coupons is absolutely positively key. It's easy enough to embed opcodes in these things and track when they're redeemed. You can put start stop dates on them. You can send them out. You can get people to opt in to your program so they can get specials. Mm -hmm. How many email addresses does the average person have? Two? Three? Would you be surprised if I told you 3.4 is the actual number of email addresses people have? Let's count them, where are they? <clears throat> Work, personal, and the one you don't want anybody to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> How many phone numbers does the average person have? Three. <clears throat> they got a work number, they got a home number, they got a cell phone number. How good of a job do we do in finding out what those other numbers are? We stink at it. Right? <clears throat> I got certain email addresses I give to people that I really don't want to talk to. So if you come up to me and I give you my Yahoo address, you know I probably don't like you. <laughs> right? Yeah. You notice I like to have a little fun when I do these things so you walk away remembering something. You need to be able to connect with people. What is more open? Email or text? Text smokes email. And I mean smokes it. Right? Look at text campaigns. Look at connecting with people. Look at engaging people. How many Facebookers in the room? How many people have LinkedIn accounts? How many people on Foursquare? Folks, society's changed, right? We love to tell people and check in when we go somewhere. Frankly, I don't want you to know where I am. I'm avoiding you. Don't be scared by social media. Embrace it. But please don't overtweet me. Right? Tweet me that you have a service special. Tweet me that something cool is going on. Like me on Facebook, share me, engage me, but please don't abuse me because I will block you and defriend you. Right? We talked about this very briefly earlier. And I'll open this up a little bit more so you can see it. I don't know for those of you in the back of the room if you can see this. But an oil change Jiffy Lube, surprise, surprise, is actually more expensive than what it is at the dealership. How many customers do you think actually know that or would believe that? Very few. Very few, right? Here's my theory. Don't be afraid to say if it costs more money. 
we as an industry are moving to that wonderful word called transparency. Because you know what transparency gives me? Gives me a chance to explain myself. Does Pet Boys use factory parts? I think customers know that. You know why they don't know that? Because we didn't tell them. Right here, this little box is a real great way to strike up a conversation and explain why. Makes you think, right? You know the other thing pet boys can't do? They can't get personal with you. I like knowing who worked on my car. I recently switched brands. I am now a Lexus owner. And I was convinced that no one could do service better than BMW. I was a serial BMW owner. I had five of them in a row, right? But after, after the last one went out of warranty and they turned the corner with me on those throwaway brakes and rotors, smoke coming off my heels, right? But one of the things that I think Lexus does insanely well is they get personal with their customers. True story. I bought my Lexus at one dealership and I serviced it at a different one. The other one that I now service it with I never met any of their service people. I didn't know their service manager. I didn't have an account. I didn't anything. But I happened to have a meeting at the dealership that day. I needed my car service. So I called a friend of mine at the dealership. I said, I hate to pull the cloud card, but can you take care of me? Yeah, sure, no problem. I pulled up the dealership. Jonah walks over to me and says, good morning, Mr. Clark. Thank you for coming to our dealership. Now, I'd like to think I'm important, <laughs> although I'm completely full of it. But it blew me away that they knew who I was. RFID. Knew it. <laughs> Tagged me the second my sorry butt turned the corner. I was so impressed. I'm not someone that goes out and posts reviews. I have to be very agnostic in what I do. I can't talk about one brand being better than the other. I can't plug one dealership over another. So I have to be very guarded in what I do as a public figure in this business. But I was so smoked and just blown away by that that I actually went and posted a review on their Plus page and on Yelp. And I said, point blank, in 17 years of doing what I do for a living, and I'm a car snob, Never have I been so blown away with amazing service. I came out, my car was actually cleaner than the day I bought the thing. There were two little of those really cool thin mint chocolate things and a personally handwritten thank you note sitting on the console of my car. You know what they just got? They just got a customer for life out of me. That was so impressive to me that I don't know that I'll ever switch brands. <laughs> yeah, who am I kidding? But it's phenomenal. We want to create an amazing service experience just as much as we always strive to create an amazing car buying experience. This is one way that you can create that amazing experience. About me, I am a master Honda tech, including a natural gas certification, ASC certified tech, I've been working on Hondas at the same dealership for 33 years. Guess who I would like to take my Honda to? That guy. Because if it's happened, he's seen it. How many of us have kids in sports? I got two boys, and man, do they love baseball, right? How many of you do philanthropic work in the community at your dealership? Cancer causes, veterans, things like that. Okay. <clears throat> Not to turn this note sad, I am a two-time cancer survivor. I am also a veteran. I served in the United States Navy for 10 years as an engineer. What do you think two causes that are very near and dear to my heart? I can think of three real fast. Veterans, cancer, 
in kids and sports. Now, you need to be careful in the dealership world boasting about how wonderful you are philanthropically because it can rub people the wrong way sometimes. <clears throat> However, there's absolutely nothing at all wrong with telling people that you support local sports teams. We should all be very, very proud of the veterans that serve this country. And for those of you that are in the room, thank you for your service. So whether you're for it or against it, one political party or another, you always need to thank your vets, you always need to fight cancer, and you always need to do the right thing by kids. And if you do those things, the community deserves to hear about it. That's a great place right here, my service department. I coach my kids' Little League baseball team. No kidding. Love baseball, right? My youngest son has an identity crisis. His mother's from New York, his father's from St. Louis. If we ever face each other in the World Series, daddy's in trouble, right? <laughs> But you, you see how you can get the human side engaged. You see how people can, can, it's no longer about you just servicing my car. You're actually have become a friend. And this is a great place to tell the story and it's a great way to make that connection. Who do we touch more, car buyers or people that service cars with us? People that service cars with us. Let's develop that relationship. Let's move it forward. Once your site actually works, you can start driving traffic. I think I need to ratchet this up a little bit because we're going to run out of time. All right. Here's something important to note. 55% of searches that are done today are non-branded. Why? People are lazy. I'm not looking to do a long tail search for an oil change. It should be pretty simple in my book. Very important. Personally, I think paid search for car sales is a bit overused. And I think if you're not careful, I think you can get yourself in a whole lot of trouble financially. But you know what's not overused? Paid search for service. All right, this is the last pain point I'm gonna give you. What's that say up there? Service my Ford F-150. Any ambiguity, any question about that search? <laughs> Over here, buy happy from Morris and get a lifetime powertrain warranty. And then right to a vehicle details page. Did I ask you to sell me a truck? What did I ask you? Okay, so let's play through this. You took me somewhere I didn't want to go, I wasted your money, and all you've done is upset me. Does that make a whole lot of sense? Let me repeat that. You gave me something I didn't want, you probably wasted about seven bucks taking me there, and you basically told me that you didn't care what I said to you. Now you know the interesting part? This was purely unintentional. The dealer didn't mean to do this, right? We'd be having an interesting conversation. That's what we'd be having, right? So check this. Make sure this isn't happening to you, right? There are easy ways to correct this. Radiator flush Ann Arbor. All right. The ad on the bottom is a great ad. Why is it a great ad? What in this ad makes it great? The reviews. The reviews. Multiple categories. Click for directions. Bold phone number. Look at your ad copy, folks. Make sure that the copy that you're writing contains good quality content. Don't just assume that the content that's being put in there is the right content. <clears throat> local extensions make your ads locally relevant. Gentleman standing there quietly holding that camera trying to make me look good is the head of our marketing operations and a bit of a SEM wizard. And what he will tell you if you talk to him or buy him a drink is that your Google Places account is your identity online, right? You need to make sure that it's tied to your local businesses. How many of you have multi-franchises? All right, so here's a thought. 
Why not put them all in the same ad? <coughs> Show yourself to be larger. Show that you've got multiple service departments. Because I might work on one side of town and live on the other. It's a greater opportunity to do business. You get four times the ad space. The click-through rate is huge. It's 10%. Rich ad format engages users dynamically, associate relevant businesses with your address, right? Do I appear to be all that in a bag of chips right here? Right? That's what you want. Expansion reveals multiple locations. Service optimized landing pages. We talked about this earlier again. Deep link them into what they're looking for. If I'm looking for a break job, don't take me to the oil change page, take me to the break job page. All right, mobile. 30% of the queries that are done today come from a mobile device. Mobile queries have grown 5x in just the past 24 months. Seeing a trend here? Think they're going to continue? Click to call and call only formats. What's the holy grail in the car business? Get the phone to ring, right? Give people ads, it's easy. I'm guilty of this. I'm constantly on my phone. Unfortunately, even when I'm behind the wheel of a car. But I try to get better using Bluetooth, and I try to get better doing other things. But if I got a click to call ad, it makes my life significantly easier. Or just buy a Lexus and press a button, right? By the way, that's a pretty expensive button to press. Location extensions on mobile, key mobile service websites. Look into it, all right? Here's what you need to take away. Invest in fixed ops digital marketing. Bring your site, standalone or subdomain, to near parity with the major national brands. By the way, folks, Toyota will not allow you to have a separate domain. It has to be part of a subdomain. Begin doing paid search, create great local fixed ops content, and build an effective mobile service strategy. Thank you for your time. Thank you for investing the time to sit and listen to me preach at you about the things that you should be doing, right? But thanks again for coming.